My name is Isla, a 34-year-old soon-to-be mother experiencing my first pregnancy. I reside in San Francisco with my husband, Miles, who is 36 and works as an application developer. From an outsider's perspective, our life might appear idyllic, but the truth tells a different story. Miles often withdraws emotionally and leaves me to handle all the household duties, especially over the weekends when he prefers to visit his parents, despite my advanced pregnancy. Photography is my passion and capturing daily life moments provides me with some happiness. However, this joy is frequently dimmed by Miles' critical attitude and lack of support. One evening, he insisted I go out to buy beer, even though I was already feeling exhausted and unappreciated. Reluctantly, I went, pondering why he couldn't undertake the task himself. Avoiding confrontation, I returned home, only to be met with indifference and criticism from him, which deeply hurt me. As months passed, our relationship deteriorated further, marked by dismissive and painful interactions. The following day after the beer incident, Miles acted as if nothing had happened. Hoping to mend our relationship, I spent the entire day preparing his favorite dinner, but my efforts were futile as he came home intoxicated, belittling my efforts and even my potential as a wife and mother. Feeling increasingly isolated, my struggles compounded as my due date neared. Miles planned a family trip with his critical parents, ignoring my apprehensions about traveling so close to my delivery. His disregard for my feelings was clear as he sharply reminded me that being pregnant does not mean I'm ill. This challenging phase of my life has left me seeking support and understanding, and I share my story in hopes it might resonate with or aid others facing similar trials. On the day of our planned family trip, my fears became reality. As we prepared to leave, my water broke. Frantically, I informed Miles that we needed to rush to the hospital. Instead of supporting me, he angrily ordered me out of the car, concerned I would ruin it. I was stunned by his callousness, feeling completely deserted at such a critical moment. Fortunately, our neighbor, Grace, witnessed my distress. Grace is a compassionate person married to the CFO of the company where Miles works. She immediately came to my aid, called an ambulance, and ensured I reached the hospital in time. Grace stayed by my side throughout the delivery, providing the comfort and support I desperately needed during this vulnerable time. As I held my newborn in the hospital, the reality of Miles' neglect and his family's harsh criticism weighed heavily on me. It was clear that I could no longer continue living this way. Grace, who had grown to be a close friend, was instrumental during this period. She even informed her husband about what had happened, which later became significant. Amidst this turmoil, a video capturing Miles forcing me out of the car had gone viral. The footage exposed his true nature to the public, leading to severe backlash. As a result, Miles lost his job and found it difficult to gain new employment. His and his parents' reputations suffered greatly, facing public scorn a stark but just repercussion for his actions. During my recovery, I sought refuge with my supportive parents and Grace. They encouraged me to focus on the future and my child's well-being. The overwhelming support and societal pressure facilitated a straightforward divorce process. Miles and his family, albeit reluctantly, agreed to the terms, allowing me to pursue a healthier, more secure life for my child and myself. Following the birth of my baby, my life began a profound transformation. I came to understand that I needed to make choices prioritizing the welfare of both my child and myself. Miles's increasingly problematic behavior had become impossible to overlook, urging me to contemplate our future more seriously. During these challenging times, Grace remained a steadfast source of support. She frequently visited me in the hospital, bringing meals and offering encouraging words that uplifted my spirit. Her husband, Damien, who served as the CFO at Miles's former workplace, also extended his support, which was reassuring given the situation's severity. Upon being discharged from the hospital, I moved into my parents' home in San Francisco. Although they were elderly, their unwavering support and the safety of their home offered a sanctuary for me and my newborn. I was profoundly grateful for their love and care, which helped ease my transition during this tumultuous period. As I settled into life at my parents' house, I found myself reflecting on the recent upheavals. 
The viral video of Miles forcing me out of the car had attracted widespread attention, leading to a significant public backlash against him. He lost his job, struggled to find new employment, and faced public shaming. Knowing that others recognized the truth in his actions provided some solace, but it did little to lessen the sting of his betrayal. Despite the surrounding chaos, I began to find comfort in the new routine at my parents' home. They were exceptional in their support, assisting with the baby and offering emotional comfort. My bond with Grace also deepened. Her frequent visits and our heartfelt conversations became a source of strength. Grace's insights and shared experiences transformed her from a neighbor into a cherished friend. During this period, I started to explore my legal options. Grace recommended speaking with a lawyer about pursuing a divorce an intimidating prospect, but one I recognized as necessary for securing a stable future for my child. Motivated by this need, I reached out to a lawyer to begin discussing the necessary steps to move forward. This decision marked a crucial step in reclaiming my life and ensuring a better environment for my child. After my baby was born, I reached out to a divorce lawyer who was understanding and empathetic toward my circumstances. We thoroughly reviewed the details of my marriage, and I presented clear evidence of Miles' neglect and abusive behavior. The divorce process was surprisingly straightforward, largely due to the public pressure following the viral video. Miles and his family had no choice but to accept the terms, the evidence against him was irrefutable and the societal backlash was formidable. It was a weight off my shoulders to see the legal proceedings advance, even though it was an emotionally taxing period. Amidst this challenging time, I rediscovered joy in small, everyday activities. My passion for photography rekindled, and I began capturing every precious moment with my baby. These photos symbolized the fresh start I was creating a life abundant with love and promise. During a stroll in the neighborhood with Grace, I met her son, Andrew, who was around my age. We clicked instantly. Andrew was compassionate and empathetic, traits sorely lacking in my relationship with Miles. Our conversations flowed naturally and he often offered to babysit, allowing me some much needed personal time. What started as a simple friendship gradually evolved into something deeper. Andrew became a crucial part of my support network, bringing laughter and a reminder of the goodness in people. My parents, too, took to him quickly and were delighted to see me happy again. As I navigated this period of change, Grace and her husband Damien provided unwavering support. They helped me manage the challenges of single motherhood and the emotional fallout from my divorce. Damien, with his practical approach to balancing work and family life, offered valuable advice, while Grace was always there to listen and provide emotional support. Through all these experiences, I felt an increasing sense of empowerment. I was actively making life choices that prioritized my well-being, and that of my child. The scars from Miles' neglect and abuse were still present, but they no longer defined my existence. I was growing stronger each day, building a life marked by resilience and new beginnings. As I settled into my new role as a mother and dealt with the aftermath of my failed marriage, I found tremendous strength in the unwavering support of my parents, Grace and Andrew. They were constants in my life, providing solace and stability during my most challenging days. The divorce proceedings were progressing, but not without an emotional cost. Miles's family refused to acknowledge his faults and tried to depict me as the culprit. They couldn't come to terms with the fact that Miles Shad lost his job and his reputation due to his own actions. Despite these challenges, I remained resolute, determined to stay strong for my baby. One morning, I received a call from my lawyer. Miles wanted to meet to discuss the divorce settlement. I was apprehensive but agreed to the meeting, insisting it be supervised by our lawyers to maintain a structured environment. The thought of seeing Miles again was daunting, filled with anxiety but I recognized it as a necessary step towards closure. The meeting itself was strained. Miles appeared disheveled and bitter, a stark contrast to the man I once knew. He blamed me for the unraveling of his life, claiming none of this would have happened if I hadn't made such a big deal out of everything. His harsh words stung, but I reminded myself of his abandonment during my time of need. Our lawyers kept the discussion on track, ensuring civility. 
Reluctantly, Miles agreed to the terms, which included child support and visitation right. I felt a profound relief. This meeting signaled the start of concluding a painful chapter of my life. Back home, my parents were anxious to hear about the proceedings. I shared the details with them, and as I spoke, I felt a burden lift from my shoulders. My mother embraced me tightly, whispering, You're so strong, Isla. We're so proud of you. Their unwavering support continued to be a source of immense comfort. Meanwhile, my relationship with Andrew continued to flourish. He was a breath of fresh air, consistently positive and supportive. One serene evening, as we sat on the porch, Andrew turned to me and said, Isla, you're an amazing woman. You've been through so much, and yet you're still standing strong. His words filled with admiration and support underscored the new life I was building one of resilience, love, and hope. Andrew's affirmation of my strength deeply resonated with me, making me feel truly seen and valued for the first time in a long while. Our relationship, initially grounded in friendship, gradually deepened into something more significant. We spent more time together and Andrew became a cherished figure in my baby's life. My parents observed our growing connection and wholeheartedly supported it, delighted by the joy Andrew brought into our lives. However, the journey wasn't without its hurdles. Miles's parents remained a persistent challenge, frequently calling and demanding to see their grandchild. They seemed unwilling to recognize the damage Miles had inflicted and acted as though nothing had changed. It was draining to handle their constant criticism, but I remained resolute, firmly setting boundaries to safeguard my and my child's peace. During a particularly trying period, Grace invited me over for coffee. We sat in her warm, inviting kitchen, and I opened up about my ongoing struggles with Miles' parents and the demands of single motherhood. Grace listened with empathy, then offered words of encouragement, reminding me of how much I had overcome. Isla, you've come so far. Don't let anyone disrupt your peace. You have every right to protect your happiness and your child's well-being, she advised. Grace had transcended the role of a neighbor to become a mentor and a dear friend. Her husband, Damien, continued to provide invaluable support as well, offering legal advice and helping me navigate my rights. As time passed, I grew stronger and more confident. I ventured into game developer, a passion I had longed to pursue. This work was not only fulfilling but also allowed me to provide for my baby independently. Each photograph I captured was a tribute to my resilience and the new life I was building. My relationship with Andrew flourished alongside my professional endeavors. He was patient, kind, and genuinely supportive, caring deeply for both me and my child. One serene evening, as we watched the sunset together, Andrew turned to me, his expression filled with affection and sincerity. Isla expressed her love to me, saying, I love you. I know this journey has been challenging, but I want to be by your side, supporting you and Andrew every step of the way. Tears welled up in my eyes as I felt the immense shift from a past filled with neglect to a present wrapped in affection and support. I turned to Andrew, my voice trembling with gratitude. I love you too. Thank you for being here through everything. After the divorce, which marked the end of months filled with struggle and resilience, my life started to veer towards a hopeful horizon. The day I signed those divorce papers was mixed with sorrow yet a profound relief. My lawyer, a consistent pillar of support, reassured me gently, this is a fresh start, Isla. You're making the right decision for yourself and your child. With the legal ties finally severed, I was liberated from the oppressive shadows of a toxic relationship. With newfound freedom, I began to rebuild a stable, joyful life for myself and my child. My game developer career blossomed, each assignment not only a job, but a step toward my personal independence and fulfillment. Andrew's unwavering support and understanding of my past were instrumental during this time. One serene evening, while dining with my parents, Andrew's proposal came as a simple yet profound gesture. Isla, will you marry me? He asked his eyes brimming with hope. Without a moment's hesitation, I accepted, tears of joy streaming down my face as my parents looked on with sheer delight. Nah, 
A friend who had been by my side from the beginning embraced me tightly, saying, You deserve all the happiness in the world, Isla. I felt deeply thankful for how wonderfully life had turned around. Despite ongoing attempts by Miles and his parents to meddle in our lives, with Damien's legal advice, I maintained strict boundaries, ensuring they respected our space. Their criticisms lost their sting, powerless against the solid foundation we were building for our future. I grew stronger and more confident, committed to safeguarding my peace and my child's happiness. As time flowed on, I settled into a new rhythm of life, my days woven with photography sessions, bursts of laughter with Andrew, and the delightful milestones of my child's growth. Andrew proved to be an exceptional father figure, filling our home with warmth and joy. One sunny afternoon, Grace and I relaxed in her blooming garden, taking a moment to reflect on the transformations in my life. You've come a long way, Isla. I'm so proud of you, she said with a warm smile. Surrounded by the vibrant flowers, I felt a surge of gratitude. I couldn't have done it without you, Grace. Your friendship is invaluable to me, I responded. The narrative of my past, once shadowed by neglect and emotional turmoil, had evolved into a tale of empowerment and self-reliance. I had reclaimed my voice and my strength, and my life was now enriched with supportive people who cherished me just as I am. In conclusion, I want to impart a message to anyone listening. No matter how bleak or challenging your circumstances might appear, there is always a glimmer of hope. Surround yourself with individuals who encourage and uplift you. Progress one step at a time and never lose sight of your own value. Empowerment and joy are attainable. Thank you for being a part of my journey.